just create here uh, link dash lists and then we will concentrate on the forms okay so first of all to create a link it's super easy you use an anchor tag and then what the user what the user will see on the browser you put it between the tags for example here is qu websites for example and then the link itself the one that will be uh, visited when the user clicks this label you will put it in this property href and here it could be either an absolute link where you put the full address sorry or a relative link which is relative to the current position so it could be a file on the same on the same folder or a file in a subfolder for example so here it could be relative or absolute position. In here, let's just try an absolute position. Q.edu.qa, okay? And um, basically what I will do, I will uh, visualize this. And here is the link. And you can see there, the link is pointing to that URL. When I click, I visit that link, okay? But when I visit that link, it takes over my page. This might maybe, if it is an internal link, if it is a navigation within my application, it is okay. I'll stay in the same application and just visit and just go into another area of my application. But this is an external link. I don't want it to take over my page. Ideally, it should open in a separate tab. So how do we tell the link to open this? To, how do we ask the anchor tag to open this in a separate tab? is by using yet another attribute of the A link, which is target. Target, I say, go ahead and open it in, in another new tab by setting the target to underscore blank. Okay, well, now if I refresh this one and then click this, it will open it in a separate tab. Okay, that's all. Of course, every element has many, many other attributes. But of course, we will not go through any of this. Uh, we will only focus, as I explained in the beginning of the course, 20% to do 80%. 80 or 90, in here 90%, that's what, even professional developers, that's what they use. But there are other little more details, but they are not so important. You might need them in small number of cases. But if you really want to learn, and really in this course we cover the whole end-to-end, we cannot spend time on every little details. Yeah, so this is what the A tag is for. Is clear? Links are clear. Now let's move on and show you one more feature, which which is quite uh, often often used, uh, which is the uh, some bullet point list. So either either I want it to be as a bullet points, or I can have it as a, a numbered list. So if I want it to be just bullet points, I use an unordered list, UL, unordered list. And within the list, what I will have within the list? LI, list item. So remember, these tags are very meaningful. They are abbreviations of a meaningful meaning. They, have a, they carry a meaning. So in here, UL stands for unordered list, and LI is a list item. So maybe in each, when we cover the HTML, We covered, for example, page layout. Then we covered, let's say, uh, tables. And then we cover, we will be covering, let's say, forms. Yep. Now, if I open this page, you can see here an ordered list bullet point for each. Now, if the order is important, maybe this is the order of difficulty or the chronological order in which we cover these topics, uh, I might want it to be an, an ordered list. All I do, instead of an ordered list, I will do ordered list, refresh, and what's the difference? I get numbers instead of bullets. Now, this is the default behave. If I don't like these numbers, I want them to be the the Roman numbers, one and two and three. How we can do this? CSS. We have to wait for inshallah for next week. You will see how we can style 
the list. Everything you see here, this is the default behavior. Programmed by the Chrome people, the Chrome developers, they took every tag in web in, in the HTML and they implemented it. And they give it some default behave, some default appearance, some default look and feel. It's up to you later on, once you learn CSS, to style it the way you wish. Okay, that's it for the main elements. Yes, please. Uh, doctor, you put the uh, word HTML without text. Is it fine? Or how does it work without text? Uh... The word HTML. Ah, yes, okay, I see what you mean. Uh, not recommended, of course, but this one is just text. By the way, I can just put everything as text. Remember, like, the, this is a good question, by the way. I can just start, come and start typing. But do we do this even for real-world reports? If you are writing a report or a story or a book, do you just bring the ideas from your mind and start typing them? Or do you go through and really structure them and organize them? Same thing here. You try to structure them and organize them. And also give each part a role, as I explained last time. So uh, this is definitely not a very good idea. I could, I could put it in a div. Or I could, this is a header, basically. This, it's better to be in H3. I don't like the big headers. So I can put it in H3. Good point. I'm not really recommended to leave text just flying around without any tags around in there. Uh, what is the uh, this is header three. You, you remember the headers? We've seen headers. There is header one to header six. Uh, header one is big and bold and has a lot of spacing. Uh, again, headers, that's the default behave, but you can style it later on once you learn CSS. So you can see here when I refresh, it is, this is header three. If it was header one, it, was, it would have been much bigger by default. But you can, of course, as I said, change the format. That's it for the basics of HTML. Now, the most important part of HTML relevant for us as developers is forms, our forms. Okay, so let us do a form together. So let me just select these guys and delete them. So when you have a form, you need to go through some kind of design exercise. Uh, think about it, uh, what this form is for, what I, what I need to collect from users, what type of input, visual inputs I will give the users to make their life easier and give them a good user experience. And then you design it using pen and paper or some kind of visual tool to design the form. And then you come back and, and translate your design into HTML. Okay? So let's design the form. Let us say, this is the, imagine yourself back a few years, you came to QU and you want to apply to join QU as a student. So you need to fill up an application form, yeah? So let's just do a simple form, much simpler than what you filled, and just have give the user the ability to fill up a form. Okay, so let's design it together. So let's start. What do you think? What we will ask our applicant? Name. Their name. So usually, first and last. yeah, first and last. We don't just ask name as one piece. We ask it as two pieces. Yeah, this is very important. Okay. Last name, first name. Of course, I can ask email, uh, phone number, all, all sorts of things. But all of them will be similar. It will, have a, it will have some kind of label and some input. Very good. So I might ask for gender. Like, this is more, this is, I, I might ask for age. Very good. I might ask for age. This is a bit different because this age will be a number. This two will be string. Let's just sort out this gender. Can I just put it as a box like this and the user will type? Of course I can, but it's not the best experience. Yes, because the, the options are limited. Uh, they can either choose, let's say, male or female, for example. So if I give them a text box, like, text box like this, somebody might misspell it, they might write it in French or Arabic, they might do all sorts of weird things. By the way, once you give the users a, a text box, it is, you will uh, be ready for many, many, many surprises. 
So if you want, when, when, when you don't want, when you know what are the possible choices, don't give the user a text box. Yeah, because they they will start like uh, giving like kind of giving you some weird inputs that you are not expecting. But can't you put like some criteria? You can, but there is a better way of doing it. Uh, so don't use this. So the best, what is a better way of doing it for gender? Uh, radio. radio buttons. So I might give the users two options: male, female. This is called the radio button. Okay, and they are mutually exclusive. They cannot choose both. Okay, uh, so this is the gender. This is basically the, the label for the gender, and these are the possible values. They can only select, they cannot enter. So basically, when you are designing the form, you say, okay, what are the fields I care about that I want to collect from users? And what is the user experience I want to give them? Uh, I select what type of input I want them to use, what type of visual, uh, visual input or visual input fields I want to provide them for them to provide me the data that I want to collect from them. Okay, now once you provide some basic information about the applicant, it's time now to select the college. Select the college they want to apply to. Now, in here again, if you give them a, a text box, then they will start typing all, all sorts of weird things. Some colleges that, doesn't, that doesn't even exist, yeah. they will start typing them. Plus, you're giving them hard time. This is, you give them, you're putting a load on them. Why they should type these things when the list is already fixed and known? So the, the list of colleges in QU, for example, are known. Eight or nine colleges, we know them, engineering, uh, art and sciences, medicine, and, and all of them, yeah? So what is the best choice here? Can we use radio buttons? No, no. Radio buttons are not very good if you have more than two, three choices. Plus, they are not flexible, okay? If, if, you, if there is a new college gets added to the, added to the, uh, to the, to QU, which is not something strange, like medicine is just recently added. So if you have a new college, you, if, and you decided to use radio buttons, you might, first of all, you might end up with many choices. Second, if there's a new college, you have to come back and change the, the actual page. You have to come back and change the page for you to cater for this. But a better choice when you have more than two options and the options are likely to change is to use what? Options, options list or drop down list. We call it also drop down list, more commonly known as drop down list. Or a drop down. Okay, and in here you will put the options that you provide that the users can select from. So here we will put it engineering, art, art and sciences, medicine, you get the idea, and so on. Yeah, and the user will come and select one of them. Now, uh, I want to show you one more, one more case before we jump and start doing the actual implementation. Okay, one more is, for example, I want to ask what is the contact method we want to use to, to contact the applicant. Contact method. It could be either email, SMS, for example. So in here, these are not mutually exclusive. I can ask you, Ask the ask the QU to contact me by email and SMS, both. So I cannot use the radio buttons because my radio buttons are by definition mutually exclusive, one or the other. In here, I can have both at the same time. So in this case, I will have checkboxes. Checkbox. Is that the drop box? Within programming, it's called, I think, option select. Yeah, but, but the commonly known as drop down. How we will implement it, which tag we will use, that is coming soon. Yes? And then once we are done, once we are done, we need basically, once we are done, we need a button. This is the famous button, which is the submit button. 
This will take the information we entered and post it to the server. And the server will process it, maybe store it in a database, in a file, whatever it needs to be to do with it. That's another story. Remember the web development experience? We have the client side and the server side. Server side is later we will open that box. For now, we are focusing on the client side. The, the user interface, the user experience we will give to the users to collect the information we request from them. So is the form design reasonable? We can go ahead now and start implementing it. So what I will do here, I will create a new form. It is the form. I will call it registration. Registration form. Okay. Uh, so let's start. First, what was the first uh, element? Yeah. First of all, yeah. Thank you. This is this is very important. Now. What we have designed here is a form. So when we want to represent this in HTML, we will put it inside the container that will contain all these elements, these input elements. And this container will be, in our case, a form. It will not be an article or a section or a side or a footer. It is what? A form. So all these elements are related and they form a form that we will use to collect input from users. So the first, the first thing we do, I'll go ahead and basically add a container to contain all the elements. This is the form container. And then now I start defining the elements of the form. Okay, so the first one, so the, every element is made up of two parts. This one is the label, and this one is the input. Label, input, label, input. All of them goes like this. So, so HTML has this tag called label. Uh, sir, yeah. shouldn't you put it inside the div first? We will come. Let's not jump, because uh, I want to uh, basically highlight the need for each one. So first, we keep it minimal, and we only add exactly what we need. And we need to understand why we add in anything. By the way, in programming in general, or in life in general, don't do anything that is not needed. And anything you put, you already should have some kind of reason why you are putting it. No, no, what I mean here, no, for now, so for now, what I'm doing here, I am blindly translating what the design we came up with to HTML. Okay? Let's do that. And if we need some more tricks, we will go. We will do them. Yeah. So now we just literal translation. Yes, literal literal translation. Okay. So in here, this will be my label, first name, and this will be my input. Okay. My input. There are many, many types of inputs. I need to tell the browser what input I, I expect I want to, I want to provide to the users. So there is a an attribute for of the input called type. There are many types, we will cover some of them. Some of them will be part of the 80% you will cover on your own as you, as you go along. So in here it's a simple input. It's just the type is text. That's it. This is enough for us. Let's try it because we are learning. We don't want to write hundreds of lines, then we see later on how it goes. We are so excited now to see how it looks like. Here is exactly what I expected. Here is a label, and beside it there is uh, an input text box. And Yeah, it's working. No problem. I can type there. It's working. This is what, expect, what is expected so far. Okay, let's move on. The, the second uh, field that I ask the user to enter, last name. last name. So I'll give it a label, last name, and then I'll give it an input. And again, what will be the type? Text. Okay, let's try it. You see here, it gives me the first name, last name. 
But yeah, I noticed there is a problem here. What is the problem? It's the problem is horizontally representing all the elements one beside the other. This might not be the best user experience. Okay? We want the user to focus on one thing at a time and put their full concentration and eye contact with one input at a time. So what we want to do? I, we want to put the, the next input in a new line. So two ways to do it, many ways to do it, but one way, uh, lazy way to do it is just put here a BR. BR stands for a new line. And once I refresh, I'll get them in a separate line. But a better way to do it is to wrap every line, every row of the form in its own div. Why do you think this is better than putting a BR? Very good. Thank you very much. We are preparing now, we are preparing this form to make it look more professional, not just the out-of-the-box visualization. Okay? Visually, they are exactly the same, but wrapping these two related elements, the label and the, and the associated input, putting them in a div, it's a good preparation for styling them as we move forward. So it does two birds, one stone. It gives us each input in its own separate line, and it's preparing us, giving us that head start to make it easier to do styling that we'll be starting to cover next week. Okay, let's move on. What else is there? Uh, age, let's do the age. Just to speed it up, let me just copy this one. Okay, here is the age. And here, the type, instead of text, I can make it a number, so the user can only type numbers. And maybe also one more feature I want to show you, I can initialize it with a value. Because we know most of applicants just came from high school, maybe most of them they are 18, for example. We just put a default value of 18. So when I refresh, I will get age 18. And of course, the user can go ahead and change it. And because this is a number, I also get this from the browser. Our Chrome developers, they gave it this extra feature, which is incrementing and decrementing. And this feature is not available in here. Why is that? Because this is a text. Because the browser knows that the type is a number, so it gives us more features. Even in the, we might need to try it, but in the, if I use this in a mobile, if I press the, if I put my cursor there, the keyboard will be switched to a number keyboard. So the browser is smart to use the type to give the user a much better user experience, specific to that type. Can you correct uh, the Oh, sorry. No, it, it doesn't allow. So it has a built-in validation. That, good point. Uh, very good. All right. So uh, let me just show you one more since we opened our since we opened our appetite to the type. Uh, let's say the date of birth. What will be the type? Date. And what the browser will do? Will hopefully give me some. A good, again, a good user experience, some nice built-in calendar out of the box. Before, H this is by the way, these types have been introduced in HTML5. Before this, we have to use JavaScript to do all of this. A more, lot of bunch of JavaScript that we have to do. Now all is built in the browser. All you do is choose the appropriate type and the browser have built-in rendering of the elements based on the type. Okay, let's move on. What is the next one? Before I move on, I want to show you one more feature before we move forward. You see here, I wish if I press the label, I wish the cursor goes to the input associated to the label. Yeah, you can see here, it doesn't do this. So, because the label is not associated with the input, when I click the label, it does not, the cursor does not jump to the input. So to associate both, to associate the label with, with the associated input, one way, like the proper way to do it is, what I will do here, I will give this an ID. What will be the ID of this input? First name. First name. 
And then I'll tell this label, oh, by the way, you are label for the first name input field. If I do this trick, what, what's the advantage of doing this? If I refresh and click the first name, the cursor jumps there. If I put, press the last name, it doesn't do it. So how can I do the same thing for the last name? I'll go ahead and give it an ID. It would be the last name. And then the label I associated with this ID for last name. Yeah? Now, if I go back and refresh, if I press this one, the cursor jumps there. Yeah? So that is basically one of the features of using labels. It gives you this extra feature. Clicking the label jumps to the associated uh, input element. Uh, by the way, since I introduced this, this uh, concept of an ID, usually for inputs we give them IDs. What is this concept of an ID? It's to make it easier to handle later on. Yeah, I can, I can refer to these elements by ID, by their ID. So every element can have a unique ID. You see here, if I try to, uh, to put this one first name, this is already, uh, the web storm is warning me. The browser, by the way, does not care. It might, it might get a little bit annoyed, but the browser has been built in a way to tolerate rubbish being thrown at it. But, but please don't do this, but just, just to let you know. Uh, so here, uh, last name. Okay, so ID will be very, very useful as we move forward. I can refer to this element in CSS using this ID and in JavaScript using this ID. I might want to, for example, age. I might, I might want to hide it, for example, or change its value. If, you are, if this form is used for graduate students, I will put the default to, let's say, 25 or 23. So I can take a, a JavaScript, some simple JavaScript code, go to this uh, age, go to this age element and change its value using JavaScript. So how can I grab that age element from the page? I can grab it by ID. That's why ID is very, very important attribute, especially for input fields. And we use it for uh, referring to these elements from JavaScript or from CSS. Okay, let's move on. What's the next one we have in our design? Gender. The gender, yes, thank you. The gender, yes. So I will give it a label. Is my div. So in the div, I'll have a label. And here in this label, I have a gender. Okay, now, in here, one way to do it is I'll have here uh, input, yes? And what will be the type? Radio. Radio. And here is mail. Just I'll copy this, paste it here, and this will be female. Okay. Just I want to gradually. I I don't. Want, I can jump. I can write this and finish. Okay. But we are trying to gradually get the idea concretely. All right. So let's move on. Here it is. Here is my gender, male and female. Is it looks fine. But when I check this one. A problem here. Yeah? They need to be mutually exclusive, either one or the other, not both at the same time. No, no need for JavaScript. You can do all of this using plain HTML things. So, how can I make these mutually exclusive? Oh, not really. But just, all I need to do is give them the same name. What will be the name of this input? No, same name, gender. And then the name of this guy, gender. Why did I give them both the same name? To make them mutually exclusive. Now, if I go back and refresh, see now, mutually exclusive. Yes? One or the other. How do I make two radio buttons or multiple radio buttons mutually exclusive? Just the same. It gives them exactly the same name. 
Yes? Okay, there's one more problem. If I forget my glasses, and I have to steer to the screen to click this little guy, okay? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be nice I can click anywhere on the label to, to select it? Yes. Yeah? Same idea in four. We'll see. So, so I want to... So one way to do it, one way to do it, is basically I'll take this radio button and wrap it in a label. Remember the label? So I'll take this and wrap it in a label. This is all I do. Let me try it. Let me do this for the same here. So I'm wrapping these two guys inside the label. Why I'm doing this? What's the, role of, what's the role of wrapping it in a label? And basically when I click now, if I forget my glasses and I, and I can click on the text to select. Can you see here now? I don't need to go all the way to this uh, little radio circle and click it. I can click the text and it will auto-select the radio button. Yes? How did I achieve this? By, by wrapping it inside the label. Yes? Okay. Uh, yes. This will not work with the ID and 4. With the? ID and 4. What is it? ID and 4. Uh, we, we can do that. We can do that. But it is better in here, in this scenario, it is much better to do it this way. So what I'm doing here, I'm basically wrapping... It can work on that way as well, but, but the label will be back. I can do it, yes, if I wish. Sorry. That's another way of doing it, but usually uh, many people control X, as I've learned last time. Okay, good. Label, okay, I'll have to put this inside, and I'll give this one an ID. What will be the ID here? Okay. Mail. Okay. The problem here is usually the ID should be the same in this case. The ID should be gender, gender. Or it's fine, like it's not very common to have female, that's fine. No need for this one, but I'm just trying to keep it to the minimum. And I see here for for uh, mail. Okay, good. All right. So let me just refresh this guy. Exactly the same behave. But if I don't want to go through this trouble of putting ID and those things, I can just easily wrap it in a label. Okay. Either way, we'll do. Whatever you prefer is fine. For me, I prefer this style. It's nicer. But it's. By the way, same behavior, you get multiple ways of doing the same thing. In this course, I'll try my best. It might not, might not be always uh, I get to, but I'll try my best based on my, based on my experience to show you the best possible way, and you will discover other ways. Because if we start diving into multiple ways of doing things, as beginners, it will confuse us more than it will help us, and it will drag on discussion about a particular topic. Uh, yes, Ali. Can we do the same trick for the first name? Just wrap it in the label? Yes, 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 we can do that. Uh, but very, very highly not recommended. This is not the... Because sometimes we want to style them differently. Yeah? Because the reason why I want to style these differently Now, if I do it this way, I have lost now, I lost now the ability to style the label with different style as the input. I can, of course, still do it, but not as easy. But in the case of the radio button, these are kind of one thing. The, the radio button and its label, you cannot, I cannot just put a, label, uh, a radio button without a label. It's, uh, it's not kind of convincing, but usually this is not very common. But this style is very common. This style is very common for radio buttons and checkboxes. 
Anyway, let, let's try it first to make sure it works. Sorry. Okay, so here it is. So first name, yes, it works. Yeah. So either way, but but let's just focus on one way, the best practice way, the most commonly used way. This is the most commonly used way. Is that you give your input an ID and then you associate the label with with the input using the form. Yes, please. Uh, doctor, uh, I've noticed that some of them that have a closing tag and some of them don't. Like the input uh, doesn't have, but the label it is a must. Very good. Is, yes. yes, very good, very good point. So some of the uh, some of the tags by design, they are self. They call we call them self-closing tags, because within the input usually we don't put anything. If I want to, to associate, to give some value to this input, uh, I will use the value attributes. So what I mean here, there is no, it is just a waste of time. It's not even by design. The input, usually, usually, the tags that have a starting and closing, you put something in between the, the start and the end. But for the input, it doesn't make sense to, to put anything in between. An input is, is basically some kind of... Uh, a visual, uh, visual input field that will be displayed to the user to enter some values there or to choose some values and so on. So it is not used to wrap other content. Not the same as Dev or... There is also, if you, if you noticed, when we want to put a, a new line, this is a self-closing tag. BR and that's it. This create, the browser, when the browser sees this, it has a new line. But because I cannot put any content, the new line, there's no content. It's a blank line. So there's no need to do opening and closing. It's self-closing tag, but this is a good point. Is clear so far? Yeah. Okay, what else, what else is left? Yes, the, the drop-down. Yes, the, 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 uh, which college the students want to go to. So here is the college. So I put it in a div. And here is the, so for the drop down, what is the tag we use for drop down? Select. So here is the select. And what we have in a drop down? Alternative options. So we have options to choose from. So here is the, here are the options. So for example, it could be engineering. It could be um, medicine, for example, yes. Um, I give it this one a label, or remember the label? What will be the label here? College, I give this one an ID so I can associate both. You can see here the IDs, I always start with lowercase. Um, and all my tags, I put them lowercase. A oh, four, sorry, yes, thank you. For college. That's it, okay, so let's just refresh this guy. And you can see here, I can choose any one of these. Is clear? Now, remember this form at later stage, we will submit it to the server. When we submit it to the server, we might not, it's not a very good idea to send all this text to the server. We might send just an abbreviation. So, for example, engineering, what is the abbreviation? ENG. Arts and Sciences, CAS. Medicine, MED. So, if I don't, if I just leave it this way, when I, when I submit the form and I choose Art and Science, Art and Science text will be submitted to the server. But if I want to give an abbreviation, and only the abbreviation will be sent to the server. How do I achieve this? Right. By putting a value, associate a value with each with each of the options. Value equal engineering. And the value here will be equal to CAS. And the value here will be equal to medicine. Okay? Now, this... This is not visible, will not be visible to the user, but when I submit the form, this is what will be submitted. I will explain this more after I cover the last part. Is the drop-down clear? 
select tag and then multiple options inside the select. The last one we want to see now is the contact, contact method. So I'll give it a label. This is the label for contact methods. And what did we say the contact methods will be? Uh, will be? Email and SMS. Yes, very good. Thank you. So uh, I'll just keep it simple for now because you got the idea. So input here. And the type will be? Checkbox. checkbox. And basically uh, what I will have here, uh, value. value will be email. And what the user will see is email. And I'll do the same. Of course, you can do label and all that stuff. I already explained it because of the time. SMS, and this is SMS. Okay. All right, that's it. So this is not mutually exclusive. You can select both at the same time, or you can select only one. Again, these are referring to the same, to the same uh, field in my form. So I will give them the same name. What will be the name here? Contact method. And the same name here, contact method. So what is left after the form, I'm happy with the form, what is left is to submit it. So I'll put here a div, and I'll put here an input, And basically, the type here will be submit. OK? So that's it. The form is ready. Now, the submit is another story how we are processing on the server. But I just want to show you what happened when the form is submitted. So first of all, if I want to make the form submittable, I can submit it to the server. I have to give every input. I have to give it a name. <coughs> Why do I have to give every input a name? I, I will. Name and, name and value. Okay, so I will explain it because of the time. Just give me. So let me give these these guys a name so I can submit the form. So the name. Why why the name is needed for every input to be able to submit the form. If you don't put the name, the form will not. Those inputs will not be submitted to the server. So that's why I have to give them a name. A uh, name in this case, first name. Sometimes you will see that uh, some inputs, they have both the name and the ID. So what is the difference? Name is, no, no, name is for the submission. The ID is for modification. Yes. So the name is, is used if you want to submit the form. When you submit in the form, the browser will take the name equal the value the user entered. And it will say ampersand the name equal value. Now, what we need, what we use the ID for? For CSS styling or for JavaScript. If we want to grab the element using JavaScript, or if we want to style it using JavaScript, we refer to the element by ID. This will become clearer. If it's not clear now, don't worry too much about it. Uh, okay. So let me just give this a name, and this is age. Uh, one more here. What's the name here? date of birth. Uh, this one, luckily, we already have a name, gender. This one, we give it a name, equal col college. OK, and then in here, method we already have. Yes, and the submit. Now, for the form to be submitted, this is a different story. We will see this in much, much more details. But I will just tell the, the browser what to do when the form, when somebody clicks the submit button. I will tell it, go ahead and send it, send it to this location on the server. So I have a, I will have a URL on the server to handle the registration. So when the form is submitted, I want it to go to this, to this place. And the method is get. Don't worry, I will explain this later on. I just want to demonstrate what happened when the form is submitted. Okay, so let me just go back here, refresh the form, fill up the form quickly, this one I wish, and then, um, anyway, all right, so mail, and then go to medicine, and then I select these two guys, and then submit. What do you think will happen when I submit? 
No, more importantly, more importantly, it will take this information that I have entered and it will format it in a certain way and then send it to the, to the server at that address I gave it, slash registration. So what is the format the browser will put all this information that I have entered? Yeah. Name, name equal value. So it will be first name equal, Abdelkarim, last name equal, Iradi, age equal 18, date of birth equal, and so on. Yeah? So have a look at this. When I submit, the reason why I put the method get is to show you this on the, on the URL. Can you see here what the, ser what the browser is trying to send to the server? First name equal the value that I have entered. From where the browser got this first name? The For the name associated with the input. And here is the age, here is the date of birth, and so on. You see, for medicine, I selected medicine. But what the browser is sending to the server? Med. The, it's sending the value associated with the option. Now, if I don't put the value, what the browser will send? The text. If there's no value, the browser will send the text. Yes? Uh, the gender, you didn't give it a value. So it's just on. Oh, very good. Thank you very much. Yes. Very good. So here, the gender. Where is the gender here? Yes. So here, what I will say here, value uh, equal M. M. Very good. And here, the value. Sorry, I'm keeping you. I know I will just, this is the last one. Just to illustrate this. Let me refresh. Fill up the form again. Okay, mail, medicine, email, and SMS, and submit. You can see here now the gender is M. Is the value associated with the, with the radio button. I think we have the same thing with the contacts. Email and contact is... SMS, because this one is a checkbox, so this field is sent, sent twice with two different values. If I selected only SMS, be it will be a sent once. You got the idea of the form? Yes. So this is the visual appearance, but when you submit, the browser will take the name equal value, ampersand name equal value, and send it off to the server, and the server will process it, and that will be the, another discussion later on. Thank you.